Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, I have missed you. You didn't even notice, right? You didn't even notice. No, just kidding. Uh, my son, what was here last Wednesday? Thank you for a few of you. The few, the mighty, the army. No, no, it's the, it's the Marines. Um, I was really proud to see my son, you know, taking his place in the kingdom of God. And I'm like, wow, God wants to do a really fast work in our lives. Because when I was 19, well, I wasn't even saved. But even when I became a Christian, I, and you know this story because I love to go on stories. So even when I gave my life to Christ almost 22 years ago, it took me three years to teach children's ministry. I was in children's ministry. I just used to pass that, you know, the snacks. And, that, and for me, that was such a privilege to do. And so what I see right now and what God is doing right now in this time, it's we hear it. I don't know if you have heard the word for the year. The word for the year is that we are in a new beginning. And you should be excited. You know what want new beginnings, but we want it like the old way. Right? Is, is, is you only me like, Lord, I pray for new beginning, new beginning, and then he's doing something new and I don't like it. Why can you do it like before? I want to hear your voice like before. Can we talk like before? Can we do things like before? But he's saying, don't you recognize that I'm doing a new thing and a new thing's mean new. So today I believe that you're going to be blessed. I believe that this message is a, um, a prophetic message. And it's, it's, it's not a strong message, but I believe that God wants to wake us up. We're living in times that the enemy wants to steal. He always, since the beginning of time, that's his job. He's a liar, but he, his, his desire, all that is in him is to steal, kill, and destroy and if he can get our thinking, if he can get our mind, if he can get our families, he has us. So the title for my message is, you got to live. I wanted to put a like bunch of like um, exclamation marks. Because I don't know about you. I don't know if you heard uh, a story. Well, this is real hap happened probably three, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. This amazing pastor have uh, an, an amazing church, 30 years old. And I thought to myself, he came to a point in his life with a beautiful family, surrounded by amazing people that loved him. But when the enemy comes and he wants to lie to you and he wants to tell you that you're never going to come out, that you're always going to be stuck in whatever season you are in life. And one of the things that we need to know is that seasons always change. But we hear it, but we, it's like we don't understand. Seasons always change. And not only in the physical seasons, but in the spiritual seasons, in our, in our soul seasons or whatever, things will always change. But the enemy wants to tell us that, you know what, we're not going to make it. And I remember when I read the, uh, you know, I read the, uh, the announcements. It was on Twitter. It was everywhere. My heart was broken. My heart was broken because I believe that as a church, we, light, we love to hide. We, we love to hide under our own troubles. We are afraid of the storms of life. Do you know that in this life, there's going to be one storm after the other, after the other. And when you're finally getting over a storm, there will be another one waiting for you. But see, but as long as we know it. As long as we know that this life, is not, we haven't been promised like, oh my gosh, the moment you become a Christian, the, mo the moment that you're born again, that's the moment that you're exempted from any trouble. As a matter of fact, the moment you give life to, your life to Christ, you're not going to have troubles with your children. They're actually going to obey you. They're going to wake up and bless you every morning. They're actually going to make breakfast for you. And if you're married, then your spouse is just going to become this amazing person. 
And he's always going to say yes to you. And she's always going to say yes to you. And, and it would be you, in the mornings, you're only going to hear the singing of the birds. Right? And guess what? You're going to go to work and then they're going to give you a promotion. Although you haven't been doing a good job, but they're going to give it to you because you're now you're a Christian. And then you always desire a house and then you're going you're gonna to go and sign up for the clearing house. Is that what it's called? I'm still yet to do it. Maybe one day I'll do it. But you know, and then that's what you think. Like everything. The moment that I became a Christian, I thought, you know what? Thank you, Jesus. All that's in the past. I will never have to suffer any other day of my life. But I'm here to tell you that when we suffer with Jesus Christ, I love what Pastor Felicia said. The pain is not supposed, it's not supposed to shape us. But it's when you're in it, Oh, it wants to bend you. At the end, many of us look like Gumby. I know if you're young, you don't even know what Gumby means. <laughs> Go, YouTube it, Google it. It's a pliable thing. I don't know if it's, it's even, it, what is it? It's Play-Doh, right? But, but you, you can bend it. And I feel like the enemy has lied to us, has lied to me enough. And he's saying, your life matters. And he's saying, you know what? Yes, storms are going to come. And the kingdom of heaven is not for those who are like, you know, like I always say, you know, I'm a, I am a peacekeeper. God has not called me to be a, a peacekeeper. He has called me to be a peacemaker. And you know what peacemakers do? They make peace. Peacemakers will start a conflict. Because all of us are afraid. No, no, no one wants to know what you're going through. And I, in the last, I think, uh, last year or a few years, I've always been very, very open. But I think in the, I don't know, in the last year, I've become even more like unfiltered. In a good way. With the word of God. You know what I mean? Not, not unfiltered like, oh my God, what she's going to say. No. Unfiltered as in, let's talk church. Because if we're going to talk church, we're going to talk about you and me, right? You and I, you are the church. And we need to get stronger. So let me give you the first scripture. This is what the Lord told me, and I'm going to tell it to you. He says, life is a fight. Do you like fighting? Some people do, but do you like fighting? Just raise your hand. Do you like fighting? Only a few. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. You need to... <laughs> no, just kidding. But life is a fight. Life is a fight, and Paul tells Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. It is a fight to stay in faith. Do you understand that? Because faith is not for tomorrow, and it wasn't for yesterday. Faith is for my today. So it's a fight to stay in faith. It's a fight to raise your children in the godly ways. It is a fight. It is a fight to have a great marriage. It is a fight to have a great, a great uh, relationship. It is a fight to have a great family. It is a fight to stay in the fight. It is a fight to be in faith. But it's a fight that you have to even hold yourself to stay in the fight. Because the enemy wants to discourage you. In the last three weeks, I don't know how many phone calls I have gotten with people that don't want to live anymore. And I'm not talking about people that do not know God. I'm talking about people that love Jesus, serve Jesus, read their word, pray. But they're in a, in a storm of their lives, and the enemy is telling them, you know what? God is not in this storm. I'm going to tell you, don't ever let your storm negate the presence of God at that moment. Because have been, uh, there has been times in my life in a few storms, I don't even call them storms, hurricane, whatever. That I have thought, are you with me or are you not with me? Right? Because, because in a storm, everything, you want to see Jesus. If you've ever been in, in trouble, tribulation, isn't it something that we crave? I, I crave to hear Jesus. I want to hear the voice of God. I want to feel him. 
I want to tangibly feel him. And if I don't feel him, I feel like I go into a tantrum. I want to feel you. But all of us do that. And see, the problem is that he never told us that in the storms or in tribulations, he never, he never promised us that he was, we were going to see him. It says that the faith, the children of God, you and I, we are to walk by faith. And I think it's in 2 Corinthians, if somebody puts it for me. Because I'm jumping around. I'm a jump around. Jump, jump, and come up, and come down. No. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. That wasn't it, but thank you for giving me that. The scripture that I want is that it says that the, the righteous, you and I are the righteousness of God. It says that we walk by faith and not by what? But why is it that we always want to see, though? Until today, I was reading it and reading it, and I started like Pastor Felicia. I woke up this morning, and I said, what am I thankful to God about? And because you're so fixated with your mountain, right? You're so, fi so fixated with your storm. You're so fixated with your situation, and only you see it growing and growing and growing. And I said, you know what? No, I'm not going to be like the Israelites going around and around for 40 years in the same mountain. Because they were never able to fix their eyes on the, on the, on the promise maker. They were never able to see what God was doing in their, in their midst. They were never able to see that, hey, if I was wearing these shoes in those times, these shoes would have lasted me for 40 years. That's what the Bible says. Read it. It says that none of their garments were even tattered. They were not even old. Their shoes, their sandals, whatever, toms, they were great. I was like, I thought about Louis Vuitton and all those good shoes. I'm like, I would have been walking there with my high heels, and they would have been like, thank God. But then the Lord said to me, that's what my children are doing now. They're walking around and just going around and around and around. But we're expecting a different tomorrow, but we still continue to do the same thing today. So today I said, you know what? I'm going to take uh, 30 minutes. And believe me, when, when your mind is negative and you're so fixated on what took place or what hurt you or you name it, right? 30 minutes is infinity and beyond. And I said, I'm going to turn off my phone. No one is to call me. No one is to talk to me. Not that I'm a phone person and I'm on social media, but I'm like, no. And I said, but how am I going to look at the time? It needs to be 30 minutes, right? So I started giving thanks to God. And um, I woke up with my hair like, I, I should have taken a picture. You would have loved it. My hair was like that, like, and I'm not even, I don't even have curly hair. But, but because, you know, when you take a shower and you go to bed and, and it's wet, and in the morning you look like, ugh, I don't even want to know. But... But I woke up and I saw myself and I went into the restroom and I was already so distracted by my hair. I thought, how about if I fix my hair first? Then I put the 30 minutes. And I said, no, 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 don't do that. And then I sat down and I started thanking God for my life. Thank you, Father, that I have this messy hair. You know what? It would be bad if I would be losing my hair, but thank you that I have hair. <sighs> thank you, God, that I have breath. Bad, but I still have it. Because it was in the morning, right? But I just, I mean, it sounds silly, but I, I, I made myself think of what are the lovely things that I have. Thank you that I have my children and they have health. Thank you that I have a church and, and you are transforming their lives. Thank you for my house. Thank you for the dogs that don't let me sleep. You know, because one was sick, and you know, I pretend that I didn't hear him because, so the kids can get up. I was like, thank you, Father God. Thank you that they got up for, for my dog. And, 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 and it sounds stupid, but I'm going to tell you that what it does is training your mind that the first thing that you say in the morning is to thank God because you got to live. There is a world outside and even within the church that is dying, we're dying. 
we're, we're, we're dying. Do you understand that? We're just living. We're just surviving. And God never calls us to survive. I, I love the word, but I know that he has never called me to survive. He has called us to overcome. But when you're living and, and going through crap, you don't feel like an overcomer. And God wants you to live. He wants you to know that he's bigger than your problem. He is bigger than your circumstances. He is bigger than your situation. This is not your battle, the Lord said. You don't have to handle it because it is God's battle. All you have to do is be still and know that God will work it out. Psalms 46.10 says, be still and know. Recognize, understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in this earth. How many are here are busy bodies? No. How many are here always busy? You're always busy. You, you pride yourself in being busy. Like if you're not doing something, you feel like you're wasting time. You're wasting life. How many? Okay, a lot, right? And then when the, when the Bible says here, and I did a study, be still. We're like, how? We've, we're not being fruitful. But am I going to sit for 30 minutes in my, in my house, in my couch or whatever? Am I going to spend an hour but God wants you to be still and know that he is God. But you know what the word still means? What do you think the word still means? Please, someone, help me. Remember, I'm back. You, you can talk to me. What does it mean to be still? What? To come down. <laughs> what else? Who said what? Okay. You know why? Because we don't know how to be still. You know why? Because we're good according to scripture. Be still. You know how many times I said that to myself? Oh, Virginia. And it's not that I'm young, yeah, man. No, no. Um, be still and know that he is God. And you say it and you say it, but I don't even know what still means. It's a good one. But you know what it means in, in, the, in the Hebrew? It means to give yourself permission to be weak. Isn't that interesting? It says, be feeble. Who wants to do that? I hate it when people, no, I'm not going to say that. I am renovated in Jesus Christ. But growing up, I always hated when people say, oh, she's so weak. She's so weak. I, I just, I was little, but I wanted to knock them off. I wanted to prove like, this. Do you think so? I would want to kick them in the chin and, and see if that was weak. Right? Because that's what I thought. Life trained me to believe that if I just relax, if I just allow myself to be weak, because when you're weak in Jesus, then he can be what? But that's what he means. He says, he says be feeble, be weak, give yourself some slack. I was like, ta-da, angel singing. Because God is telling you, you know, yeah, you're in the middle of the storm and you're working yourself crazy. But I'm giving you and I'm telling you that what I want you to do is it's okay. It's okay to be weak in this moment. And that doesn't mean that you're weak in faith. It means that you're yielding. He's telling you to be still. He's telling you to trust him. He's telling you that, that he's never going to leave you. He's telling you that he's never going to forsake you. That maybe you went to the doctors and the doc doctor told you, you know what? You are not going to get better. As a matter of fact, you're getting worse. And then God tells you, be still. You probably go home, Google everything that's going on. And call somebody and tell them what's going on with your life, and, and then they're going to add to you. I remember when I became a Christian and God news, God, 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 I mean, God knows why he brought me into this earth when he did, because if I was brought up when, in Google time when I was younger, any sickness that I felt, I would go to the library. No, I was diligent. I diagnosed myself. If I had money, I should have paid myself. For the diagnosis. But see, we hear things and we, I'm a Google, I'm a researcher. I, I need to know everything. But see, imagine if we would just flip the tables and decide, no, I'm going gonna, 
I'm going to find out what God thinks about my situation. I'm going to find out what God thinks about my family. I'm going to find out what my God thinks about my kids. I'm going to find out what God says about this sickness. I'm going to find out why am I feeling that he is not talking to me. Because I have heard it. Even I said it. I don't know how many times, if I can count thousands and thousands of times, when people say God is not talking to me. Not only have they said it, I said it out of my own mouth. God is not talking. He's silent. You know why he's silent? Because he wants you to be still. He wants your heart and your soul to come down. He wants you to know, you know what? And I think about Paul. Remember Paul, the apostle Paul, and then he's going to, um, he's, he, he needs to go from one place and he gets into this boat, right, as a prisoner. And the Lord told him, the Lord gave him a word and, and, and the word was like, you're going to make it to the other side. And I think it does in Acts 27, that's your homework. You can read it because it's a long story. But God tells him, I, I am taking you to Crete, but you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Your life is going to be good. So don't worry, Paul. Right? So if I will hear the word, Virginia, I'm going to take you to Italy. You're going to be awesome. I'll be like, mm -mm, you know, like we'll do a little bit of salsa here and salsa there. Salsa everywhere. And I'll be like, yes, he said, he promised me that I'm arriving to Italy and that he says that my life is going to be safe. That's all I care. And then I get on the boat and then the storm comes. Not only does it come, but it destroys the boat. They, 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 were, they were lost at sea for 14 days. And can you imagine what he went through his head? We just read like, oh, okay, he was lost. Oh, didn't have anything to eat. And he has to encourage the captain, has to encourage all the prisoners. And I'm like, and finally he arrives. He arrives at, at the shore. And if everything is broken. The, the, the boat was shipwrecked. It was gone. It was gone. And to me, I thought to myself, thank God I'm not Paul. Because I would have been like, but what happened to the boat? You see, you, you will be fixated. Well, what happened? Why would, you, why would you allow the boat to be broken? Why would we encounter the storms of life? What, what, what happened? I probably wouldn't be stuck trying to figure it out and try to, can we, can we glue this boat together? And then on top of that, he gets off, and then, and then he gets off, and he's, he's, because he's such a great guy, such a mighty God, a mighty God uh, that we serve, he's like, you know, I'm going to help my other my other team members and, and my other fellow prisoners. And he starts to gather wood, right? And you heard the story, right? While he's pulling out the wood, a viper bites him. I would have been like, <laughs> just to see it, like, because some snakes are not my friends, but I would have been like, okay, I'm with Jesus already. It just went like this, like, like nothing, like, can you can imagine? Can you imagine seeing some? Have you seen cobras? Have you seen those people crazy trying to get bitten by them? But he just pulled it out, tossed it like that, continued to do what he was going to do. And, and to me, what I'm trying to tell you is like sometimes he, no, no, sometimes he's always in our storms is that we are expecting a different outcome. I'm expecting my boat to survive. You know, there's many people that said, I, God gave me a house, but then he took it. He took it? He, like, he came and took your house? No, you lost it. It maybe was the enemy. Maybe, maybe you just went through uh, financial trouble. But maybe you were not a good steward with it. But we get stuck in what we lost. But it, what is it that you have now? What do you have now? Do you know what we have? We have hope. And I'm speaking to myself. You have hope. If I have to say thank you for something in the morning, thank you that I have hope. Because if I have Jesus, then I have hope. Thank you that I have the Holy Spirit right now. Is he guiding me right now? I don't hear him right now, but he is with me. Isaiah 41.10 says this, do not fear anything. 
for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, and salvation. I'm going to tell you that life will give you nasty punches. In my 21 years of living, no, just kidding. So who laughed? Wow. <laughs> yeah, for that you laugh. I'm like, okay, she's dreaming again. But in my life, life has hit me hard. Hard. And when I mean hard, I don't mean a slap. It's like somebody got a hammer and hammer me a thousand times. But I can honestly tell you that God will use everything, every little bit, every little debris of your heart, of your pain, and he just wants you to trust him. That even then, when I didn't think that he was with me, he has always been with me. And he wants you to know that he is always with you. If we only just grasp that part, like God is with me. He loves me. He is for me. I am an overcomer. I don't know how this is going to pan out. I don't know. I don't know the future. All I know that my future is bright. I don't need to know the details. And for someone who loves details, it's really hard. You cannot be afraid of the storms of life. Don't, don't wait to have everything in order. Maybe, I don't know where you are in life today. I don't know, I don't know where, where you've been. I don't know what has taken place. I don't know your situation. I don't know your pain. I don't know your desperation. But there's someone who does. And his name is Jesus. And he wants to heal you. He doesn't want us to live in desperation. Oh, believe me, I know, I know desperation. I know fear. But it's beautiful to say that we're no longer slaves to fear. But one thing is to say it and sing it, and one thing is to walk it. Because the kingdom of God is, it's, it's, suffers violence, the word says. And the violent, the forceful, take it by force. I had to come to accept. And it was hard for me to accept. And I wish I can tell you I accept this part 20 years ago, 15 years ago. No. I think I have come to accept that life is a fight. But when you have lived your life and all you have done is fight, you get sick of it. You get exhausted. And when you're exhausted, you cannot think straight. You cannot see straight because you're not going to see God in the midst of it. Not with these eyes. But you will see his goodness. And you will taste his goodness. And he says that his mercies are new every morning. Do you understand that every day we, we, we wake up with a new sleep? Like every day. And one thing that I have learned, and I'm going to tell you, is about the amazing grace of God. But before I tell you that, I'm going to give you one more scripture. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be what? He'll fight for you. So don't struggle with your own feelings. Like Pastor uh, Feli said, internally we're struggling. And we're, the more we struggle inside, the more, the more busy we are. But we're not doing anything because we're waiting for every duck to be in a row. Our ducks are never going to get in a row.
God wants you to trust them. God wants to heal you. God wants to believe that, that he's greater and he's mightier. And that you and I have everything to win. Yes, we will fight, but we win. Because it says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. But many times we're talking just not the word of our testimony. Believe me, I have talked not the word of my testimony. Yes, find a few friends that you, you need to. You need, you need to tell people what's going on. I'm going to say, go tell the entire world. But I'm here to tell you that I know that there's many of you here. That you have been so disillusioned, so disappointed. I think you've been fighting. I want to hear, I want to say like 18 months to like almost two years. And you are exhausted. You're super exhausted. You're super exhausted that now you, it's hard for you even to, to believe that God loves you. It's hard to believe that God wants to speak with you. It's hard to believe that he is there for you. It's hard to believe that he wants you to be still. It's hard to believe that. And what the enemy loves is that when we go through secret storms. Do you know what a secret storm is? A secret storm is when no one knows. You wake up in the morning and you put on your makeup. Your alarm goes off. You put on your makeup. And, and then you, even you put on your own fake smile, right? Because we need to show that we have faith. You go to work and you're sick and tired of your work, but you're there. And no one knows. And when people ask you, how are you doing? You're like, praise Jesus, I am. I am awesome. And the more you say it, then the enemy tells you, you liar. Because you won't be still. I don't say, go tell your co-worker, oh my God, this is what happened to me. It's like, you know what? I am well. Because you're not lying. Because you are well in Jesus. It is well with my soul. I'm on my walk to my wholeness. And you hold fast to the promises of God. And you don't let fear, you don't let storms blow you away. Don't let doubt. Don't be like what James says, that we, one moment we believe with God, yes, Lord, I know that you're going to deliver me. No, you gave me a word. And then 30 minutes later on, I don't think you're going to do it because I don't feel you. I don't hear you. I want to feel different. Stop trying to find Jesus and, and his spirit and, and, and God in our senses. They're wonderful, but you won't find them there. But when you speak to your spirit and you say, you know what, and this is what I've been doing, you know, I'm going to speak to my spirit. Excuse me, flesh. Excuse me, soul. I bless you. I'm going to be just like David. I'm going to bless my soul, but right now I need to talk to my spirit because my spirit is connected with his spirit, and then we can be in alignment. And that's the one I need to speak. So it goes deep. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.